Hello, chart watchers and Decision Point faithful. Welcome to this first episode of Decision Point. And on January 4th, our very first show of 2021, we want to welcome you. I'm here, Aaron Swenlin, with my father, Carl Swenlin. And we want to get you prepared for not just the week ahead, but really for the year ahead. So we'll do our very best as we continue on through 2021 to do just that. How are you doing, Dad? Welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, doing well. Happy uh, New Year to everyone. Yes, absolutely. And thank you for all your well wishes that we did receive from our subscribers. We very much appreciate all of you. And it was very nice to hear from you as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at our agenda today. Um, first of all, the rising wedge that we've been watching, gosh, Dad, I don't even know how long we've been watching that rising wedge is finally confirming we're fi we finally saw a breakdown from that wedge. We'll talk about that in more detail later. Um, gold did have a signal change today. So we'll be talking about gold and of course, going hand in hand with that would be the gold miners. We have some monthly charts. I definitely wanna show you the Dow's monthly chart because we did get a signal change on the monthly PMO finally. And then I will finish with the diamond of the week. So something that I've been watching and um, honestly, full disclosure, I do actually own, but I think it's uh, at a nice pickup point right now. So I wanted to share that with everybody at the end of the program. All right, well, let's get started here. Let's look at those decision point scoreboards. Today, the NASDAQ 100 actually got a, a PMO sell signal. What's really interesting, and I'll look at that chart for you in a little bit, the very interesting thing about it is it was on a very strong buy signal. It was accelerating upward. And today, of course, with the big decline, it just um, tipped completely over and went below the signal line. And on the Dow, we finally saw that uh, monthly PMO turn up and get above its signal line. So we finally do have a confirmed monthly PMO buy signal on the Dow. Um, but as I uh, told my dad about it. I'm kind of chuckling because, um, you know, hey, it's just in time, is it not, for <laughs> the, the big decline that is likely to occur that we're really um, paying close attention to as a possibility. The sector scoreboards haven't really changed much. I think since the last time I presented it, we did add a neutral signal for utilities. That means that the 20-day EMA crossed below the 50-day EMA. So we got that negative crossover, but the crossover occurred while it was above the 200-day EMA. So that why, that's why we give it a neutral signal instead of a sell signal. And a neutral just means, you know, either fully hedged or in cash, just not in it. Um, you're not shorting it, you're just not in it. So that's pretty much our neutral position. All right, well, we have lots of stock charts to go look at. So why don't we go ahead and do just that? <laughs> Did you wanna start with the, um, uh, with the um, five minute candlestick chart, Dad? Do you wanna um, lead in with that? Or did you want me to pull that up and we'll go that way? Yeah, why don't you go ahead and take it? I, I don't use the five minute candlestick. <laughs> oh, oh, I mean, I'm sorry, the five month. <laughs> okay, yeah, that'll be good, okay. Yeah. There we are. I adjusted our um, trend lines just slightly, but I don't think it really changed the picture very much. No, uh, the uh, I would have drawn the top one tighter because of the, uh, the week of the 14th, that top there, but it's, it doesn't matter because it tried to go out, but it never did. And I think we're really right now, we're at the same situation that we were on the 21st where it came down out of the wedge and then it got back up inside. It's a little worse this time, but it's still, you know, look how much selling was going on. And it, it's like the, the market was looking for a chance to do some selling and got it out of the system. I'm not saying it's over, but, you know, it still makes me nervous. It didn't close down. Right. I mean, we did at least not see the close below the 20 day EMA, I think, which, you know, the bulls can can uh, take that to heart. Uh, and then there's a support level, really, the very, very short term support level at that November top 
that seems to be a nice little uh, pullback point for the bounce. And so we might be just headed to do exactly that. Um, I, I don't uh, feel quite so confident that we're gonna see it bounce off of that level necessarily. We still have that OBV negative divergence in play. We had a really big pop on volume on this um, decline, as well as the VIX finally dropping below the lower Bollinger Band on our inverted scale. So um, certainly saw a lot of action today with that pop in volume and the drop in the VIX uh, that's now going to, as you can see, start to widen the Bollinger Bands just a bit. We had gotten really, uh, we were, the squeeze was on. And typically, of course, in order to get out of a squeeze and for the Bollinger Bands to expand, you're either gonna have a big move up or down. And of course, with the VIX, um, you know, when you're in a squeeze, it, it's relieved usually by a, a big move uh, in the fear index uh, with higher readings. Again, we're on this inverted scale. So yes, the rising wedge has now, um, you know, it's confirmed. We got the drop, but at the same time, there's still a little bit of support left right here. And now the RSI, which was getting very overbought, is now just in positive territory. So it's at least relieved some of those um, overbought conditions to some degree. You can see the PMO, of course, has accelerated further downward. And I promised a picture of the NASDAQ 100. So I'm going to show you that. There we go. Uh, so the last buy signal we had came in in November and we had a little whipsaw here. If I recall, it didn't actually change the signal. And even if it had, I didn't want to um, you know, log it because I knew it was a, a whipsaw. In any case, we finally do see that we've gotten that drop. And I'm going to show the thumbnail so you can see it was on the really nice path moving towards the upside. And then today it just um, it just fell out of bed. And so now that's where we got that PMO cell signal for the NASDAQ 100. All righty. Did you want to look at gold or did you have a, a particular chart in mind you might want to talk about? Yeah, let me take it. Mm -hmm. Okay, gold had a, <laughs> you know, I wrote an a, a article on Thursday that I was looking for it to drop down out of this wedge, which it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, was up on Friday and then today it's popped out of the top of the wedge. I just, you know, bring your attention to back here and see what, how we had, you know, a nice up, up move and Sorry, no, no cigar didn't work, but we did get a new buy signal today on gold. The 20 crossed up through the 50. And uh, that's, you know, I like it better than say when it happened back in here, when they happen in the flat areas, they're kind of uh, iffy, but uh, we've got a nice double, but not, well, actually a rising trend here not a double bottom, but a uh, rising trend, which is maintaining, uh, we just have to get, um, maintain outside this wedge and go higher. Um, here's an interesting, uh, well, let me see. Uh, there it is. Notice that the dollar was up today. It doesn't look like a yeah, it's, it actually was down and then that's why the bar bar is so big there, the candlestick. But when the dollar's up, you expect the gold to be down, but no. Mm -mm, so, not today. Right. So I, I'm, I'm feeling good about gold. I'm just, haven't found a good place to feel comfortable entering. And I, this is not a place where I would want to chase it. Everybody has their own methodology. What do you think about the uh, discounts? Because I did notice they're starting to pull back. Didn't update today. Let me just try it. See if it's no, you it's not. I already it's see it early. starting to um, turn over. It'll be you interesting know, to see what I it is today. The um, this takes a while usually to get above. You know, start getting green bars where people are paying a premium 
for the the uh, closed in fund, um, and it could stay bullish for a long time. You know, over you know, could play on premium for a long time, and uh, uh, so right now we're still not seeing any any uh, enthusiasm for gold, which you know essentially is good. And when we do start seeing it, that's also good because it means that people are starting to come on board and we'll start, uh, we'll see, start seeing more buying, uh, hopefully. Yeah. That is, <laughs> was quite a big move. I was um, kind of surprised to see that. <laughs> we were talking just before the show that and I've been thinking about this for some time, that the, you know, and especially crystallized about a week ago that the, the stocks are becoming Bitcoin-esque. Uh, if you think about Bitcoin, and it's still you get down to it, there's nothing there. You're placing a bet. It's like you're rolling the dice in the casino or in an alleyway, you know, and it's... <laughs> There, you know, you're going to win or you're going to lose, but behind it all, there's no, there's no uh, substance. With gold, at least there's the gold. You have the gold, and uh, with the stock market, it's getting so overvalued, most overvalued in history, according to some people, and uh, I have no problem with that. It's just that, you know, so you have. An overvalued level, and it's way above that. So that means that people are buying a lot of nothing. It's just all speculation on it's going to go higher. And it may, but you look at stocks like Tesla. You know, my right, great company, but still, it's not worth what people are paying for. You know, it's just not. There's the value is there. Now, right. it's well down the road in the future, who knows? But that that's you know, there's a lot of people betting on the future. It could be another Microsoft. And we have any, after the splits in 20 years, they'll be, it would have been paying it $2 a share that year. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah it's something that we've had to kind of um, fight through in a, in a way is because logically, of course, in our minds, you know, when you're buying a stock, for example, I told you about Zoom, people are now paying a price for Zoom that is assuming that they're gonna get 20 times their what they're projecting as subscribers next year, 20 times. I mean, at this point, people are, are in the market to play the charts, to play what's going on, but they're not necessarily paying attention to that value. Let's just look at Zoom. Oh, ZM. <laughs> oh, so that's right. Okay. And I did have somebody ask me in the trading room this morning if it was at a buy point, um, you know, because it has fallen back. Uh, but I, I, I couldn't say uh, it was the best buy point. I would want to wait till we saw some some better moves. Oh, on I see. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, you've got a, a falling wedge, which is which is bullish, and it's not necessarily you know it's not necessarily destined to go keep going lower but it's what is it we've got noticed that we've got a pe of 251. And see that see that's no that's not not any touch with the reality there and what is it it's fallen 43 percent so it could be more down side coming or maybe we'll find a bottom this time mm -hmm. yeah so and that's just one example yeah, of many. Back to the, the Bitcoin, notice that I had this tighter uh, up here before uh, today or this week. But you notice that it did break down through the former uh, parabolic arc, but now it's, it's, it's still continuing higher. And uh, this was maybe a 20% drop right here. It's something like that 15 or 20 percent, but not enough to get it going. And people just can't wait to buy more of it. Yeah. Well, there you <laughs> the market, like you said, I think it is um, 
it is starting to turn into speculation. It, it's, but you know what? We have to be nimble. We have to go with what we, we have, so. You know, uh, when I first started with technical analysis, you know, I was told and I believed and I actually still do believe that I didn't need to sleep. I didn't need to know the name of this company or even what it did. As long as I had a chart, I could, I could trade it. And that's still the case. Uh, but still, if you're if you're going beyond trading, uh, you certainly want to know if you're going to be an investor and be long term holding. Then you want to know there's something there because obviously uh, you can't be buying a company without knowing, you know, just on the chart, you know, for a long term period. You you've got to know what's there. Absolutely. Totally agree. Do you have any others? Um, otherwise, I think I'll, I'll uh, get uh, into the gold miners, I think. But did you have any yeah, other? Okay. And, oh, yeah. Well, here I've got USO. Oh, yeah. Yes, we've got a uh, top here. Now, I, I think this is kind of uh, looking like a uh, Adam and Eve double top. This Eve's a little short here on the top. But I think that's what I think it's rolling over to go down some more. It's due for more of a pullback, I'd say. Okay, you can have it back. Oh, okay, very good. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at gold miners. I, I get asked about them all the time, uh, especially right now, because there's a lot of action going on with it. There they are. And this is a chart I look at every day in the decision point alert. Clearly an excellent day for the gold miners. Uh, I've been watching them. We had you know, started this uh, short-term rising trend within the, the longer-term declining trend that we've been in here. And my big concern was, as we were coming up here, and you can see, let's see if I can get a thumbnail on here, make it a little more visible. There you go. So you can see we've been really struggling on getting above the 50-day EMA. And the 50-day EMA had then kind of configured itself right along this May top, which was also forming resistance. You had the 20-day EMA there, and you had the declining trend that had to also be broken. So I was you know, hesitant with gold miners until I saw that breakout. Well, of course, we've gotten a huge breakout today. It even brought price out of that um, rising trend channel that I had uh, originally put in here as well. I think we're going to be due for a pullback. I mean, this is an awfully big move. It's got the uh, island sort of formation set up here with that big push. I would expect to see a little bit of a pullback here. But getting above this area of resistance, I think, was really important. And if it can stick above that May top, I think this would uh, be a pretty good base uh, to start looking for them to move higher. And you know, when we look under the hood, as we like to say here at the all of the different indicators, including our Silver Cross index, which measures how many components of that gold miners index are on uh, 20 50 day EMA buy signals. So their 20 is above their 50 day EMA. And you can see we've got less than half of them, but it's slowly rising. So you're seeing some strength there, about half of them, well, this is the BPI, and you can see it is top, um, bottomed above its signal line. And then you also have uh, the improvement, the rising bottoms here on these other indicators that were going along with the, the rising trend that we were seeing there. And the good news is, in my opinion, with them, even with this giant move to the upside, is none of these are particularly overbought. So I think that that tells us that underneath, underneath the surface, there is support from the membership of that index, if you will, or the ETF GDX. So I feel that there's, um, you know, given the fact that these indicators are starting to trend up and we got that breakout, we've just talked about gold and gold, you know, it could be another one of these fake out breakouts. Um, and, and this could also turn out to be the same for gold miners, but the fact that we got through all of that really heavy duty resistance, I think really puts a positive spin on gold miners. And entry-wise, I think we'll see it, like I said, I would expect to see a pullback over here,
but if we see another day of selling and if gold is looking um you know exciting still gold miners will have that wind at their backs and it could help them continue higher as well so i'm liking the gold miners right now see that that is like with gold you had that breakout in november that uh, failed uh, right but what's different now is that the current rally is coming off much deeper oversold conditions on the indicators you know we'll look at the uh Stocks above their 20 EMA was down at zero back in uh, November. So yep. And so since then, I mean, it's it's been a rocky road, obviously, but <laughs> we're still in a rising trend. Right. And that's a great point to make. That failed breakout, you can see, really overbought conditions at that time. I mean, it was just it it really had the um, uh, an exhaustion. You know, it just it really looked like an exhaustion even at that time when we got that breakout. So, uh, you know, overbought conditions as we've seen in the past can certainly persist when they're doing a really great job and have a nice rally going. So, uh, you know, even if we get to this level, I mean, that's that point in time to be, uh, you know, paying a little extra attention to it because, you know, overbought conditions even you know, in a bull market. I mean, they can persist, but eventually um, you're, you're usually going to see them disintegrate eventually. So, uh, but yeah, I like this pop um, better than that previous one that failed mainly for that exact reason. Excellent. All right. Let's see. We looked at, did we look at bonds? I think you had that chart up. I uh, don't recall. I, yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah just not doing anything it you know it's they're set we've had this gently rising pmo but mostly flat you know so we haven't really seen much action here at all uh you know the pmo is certainly telling us we we could see that upside breakout um uh, rsi not telling us much it's pretty much neutral but um yeah as far as bonds go i mean again you have the setup for the breakout but it, it's just failed so many times on this declining trend line. It'll be interesting to see if we can get that pop. And notice now that that declining trend is the resistance level is now punctuated by that 20 and 50 day EMA, and not to mention the 200 day EMA as well. So this is gonna be very, very strong overhead resistance uh, to see for TLT to break out of, we'll see if, this is what try is this. Well, it didn't get there. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll have to see if this is this is the one. Um, but yeah, I'm not, uh, I, bonds, unfortunately, we're not getting a lot of information out of. All right, uh, I suppose it's about time for the diamond of the week. And the one I'm gonna point out, and again, I have to say full disclosure that I do own this one. Um, and I've owned it through all of the rough patches as well. So, uh, but at this point in time, I really like the way that it's shaping up. It's in that strong area. It really pulled back. It got out of that highly overbought area. And, you know, we've come off now for the third time off of that 50 um, day EMA and we started to make the move. It did pull back, but you can see it came right back to the 20 day EMA like it had done before. And then it started back up. The PMO looks great. It is not overbought. Uh, we've got rising bottoms on the OBV, which I like. And, you know, I think prices, you know, you've got this, you could say a double bottom. I, I was mentioning in the trading room, it's a little, um, it's not perfect, but basically you do have two lows here and that was a failed breakout. Um, but now we're popping back up. We haven't closed above that confirmation line, but I really like the way this is setting up. You could even make a, a case for a cup and handle in the shorter term. But I do like Sunrun and looking at the five minute candlestick chart. And this is what I like to do in my trading room is I bring up the daily and then we look at that five, five minute candlestick chart to time our entries and our exits. And I find that it's just, extraordinarily helpful if you have the opportunity to be able to do this before you buy or sell a stock, just looking at these five minute candlesticks. And the very interesting thing was, is that while I was in that trading room, it started at noon, 
uh, as we were finishing, I was watching this and I said, the buy point might be coming in if this is a, you know, we're looking for entries. The RSI went positive back here and we already were seeing the turn on that PMO and we got the crossover. So that would have been your buy point right about here. And of course, you know, we're up slightly from that just on the day. But the main thing is, is I just want to get as much, um, I want to take advantage of my entries and my exits, even if we're only talking about a quarter of a percent here and there, uh, it's, it's worth it to me. So now I'm looking for that next buy point and it actually came in shortly before the close. And you can see it's really at that same area where the previous buy point was. So if you're not able to watch on the open or you can't watch these candlesticks, you can at least look at history and that'll give you an idea of kind of those areas that could be considered your entries. For exits, I use the same thing with the PMO and the RSI. The only difference is that when I'm coming to sell a stock, I will sell as soon as I see momentum shift downward. I'm not really that concerned about the RSI necessarily. If I'm considering holding in, I'm not sure, then I'll want to wait until I get the sell signal and that negative RSI. But if I'm here and I want to sell, I'm going to walk in on the chart. And as soon as I start to see any kind of a decline in the momentum, to me, those are the sell points. It's the buy points where I like to be especially um, uh, mindful of, of where I'm coming in rather than where I'm exiting. I did do a... Um, program a decision point show special last week that talks a lot more about using the different uh, the same indicators but on different time frame charts and i find that on all of them it translates so very well so i'm pretty happy with it <laughs> with the way it's turned out so far and um, i like sunrun though i think that this is a pretty good um, time possibly to get in here I'm not, uh, I've been telling all of my Diamond subscribers, me personally, I'm not expanding my portfolio right now. I don't have any interest in doing so. And for the last two weeks, I've been selling slowly into strength. And so I'm not ready to start adding to my portfolio until we start to see something a little bit more um, uh, bullish going on on the on the spy, but right now there are too many things that are showing me weakness. And why do I want to expand my portfolio when I, I feel like my confidence level would be lower? Because you know we want to go with the market trend, and if it's starting to trend lower or the market is weak, we're putting ourselves at a disadvantage if we hop into a stock when we know that the overall trend is not necessarily going to support it. So you, the difference, I... Hmm? Can you click back to, uh, over to the one year um, um, spy? Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to emphasize before we leave, look at the left side of the chart and that decline there. That was the craziest decline I've ever experienced. And uh, this, that's what you get from a market that has, that is so overvalued. You get you, people decide I'm not speculating anymore and they're gone. So exactly. Just, just a reminder before everybody leaves. Exactly. So just um, be very, very careful when you start investing in an environment where uh, you're going to be going against, say, the market trend. Um, I, like I said, with Sunrun, I liked it because uh, it's in a space, the renewable energy space that seems to be pretty strong, continues to, to rise. I know that TAN, I think, was the ETF, and that's one that I look at, uh, that you can look at, and it's, it's still doing quite well. That's all we have for today's Decision Point show. Happy trading, and see you next week. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.